Welcome to The Secrets of Success. By following the proven techniques of the guests who appear on this series, you'll learn that even successful people run into detours and failures, and how you can apply their success techniques to change your life. You're now listening to the most unique show on radio, the show dedicated to making you a success. Who's blocking your success? Is it the kid or the king? Let's find out from Sashin Shah. Sashin, thanks for being with us today. Hey, it's great to be here. Sashin, you've written a book called The Kid and the King. So obviously that's going to catch our attention because we have to find out what you're talking about. But before we get into that question, you say there's three questions that leaders ask you all the time. What are they? Well, I mean, you know, when clients find me, they usually have run up a ladder and rung a bell and they're (laughs) they're super successful people. But, you know, they're really interested in, you know, the question of like, how do I live a life of achievement and peace or, you know, how do I live and fulfill the potential I know I have without exhausting the daily warfare on themselves or they'll ask, you know, something along the lines of like, I'm smart and accomplished. Why do I do some of the things that I do? You know, this book could have been called easily. Why do really smart people do dumb things? (laughs) Then you've got me for a reader right away. And I think 90 (laughs) percent of our audience would be joining in. Now, I took a quote out. You say transformations in business and life can come from something as simple as a relationship or a perspective shift. And tell us how that applies to this book. Well, so, you know, the premise of the book is really pretty darn simple. And it was my attempt at trying to reconcile what was going on inside the brains and the lives of these super successful people that I was working with and myself included in that list. And what we've observed again and again is that the the, the kind of the going strategy, the, the approach that I would argue self-help and a lot of the leadership courses and uh, the industry is putting forth there is a very masculine conquer, um, overcome, um, uh, you know, um, just, you know, just it, it's, it's, you know, we, we're, we're going to crush our goals. We're going to, we're going to defeat this part of ourselves that seems to be getting in our way. Right. So we have a goal, we have an outcome and we can't seem to get there. So what do we do? We fight. So after looking at this again and again, I realized that while those strategies are inarguably, they're valid and effective. I mean, that's why they're continuing to be used. They're just an unsustainable way of continuing on with life. And a lot of times that fight approach has unintended consequences for those who are out achieving it. And so what you end up with is people that will put their head down and go to battle. But when they come up, they may have achieved incredible things. But their experience of life is not a match for what they've achieved. So the perspective shift was or the the perspective shift in the book is to instead of trying to fight this part of ourselves, which I call the kid in this book, this kind of incessant part of us that continues to show up in spite of our best efforts and intentions, Instead of fighting with that and constantly have to go to war with it, what if we just took on the approach that this is just a part of being human, that the kid isn't going anywhere. It's going to still say those things to you. It's still going to question. It's still going to have you procrastinate and act in certain ways that may not be consistent with your outcomes. But instead of trying to defeat it, to actually meet it where it is, to understand it, and take it one step further, be responsible for it, actually learn the conditions under which that kid shows up, the mechanism and how it works, and learn to anticipate it, learn to work with it. And when it shows up, being able to simply say, oh, I know you. It's a, it's a, you know, in baseball, if, you, if you're getting a pitch high and outside and you're still swinging at it, you're not going to go very far. And I feel like that's what a lot of people are doing. They're just swinging at stuff they shouldn't be swinging at. They're, well, they're taking the bait. It's a great title. And it, as I said to you before the show, of course, I said to myself when I saw it, 
what is this about? I have to read into it, and that's what every author wants us to do. And once you start reading the book, you say, wait a minute, this makes a lot of sense. And am I doing it? Yes. Am I falling into some of these traps? Now, once you say that once you realize what the kid is doing to you, you get more clarity and energy. Do we ourselves, can we do this by ourselves, or do we need help from you or Dr. Phil or somebody on television? Yeah, I mean, you know, it, uh, you know it, the, it's outlined in the book. I don't think it really takes a whole lot. You know, here's the thing. My experience of this and my client's experience of this is they watch themselves set outcomes, go after their targets, and they seem to be surprised every single time they kind of go back and revert to some behaviors that are not consistent with who they are. So, I mean, do you need to go to Dr. Phil? Do you need to come to me? No, it really is as simple as you just said. It's just a perspective shift. When you can understand and put into context how the behavior of adult human beings exists in the world and start to become, you know, just approach it from a different mindset, you have the ability to meet that behavior in a different way and have an experience of life that's consistent with what it is that you were going after in the first place. And I think that's the most important thing. And I, and I really want to reiterate this, you know, you, you talk about success and we talk about success and we, there's all these books about success. I'm not sure if we really give credit to the experience of success or what the experience of success looks like when you finally ran up that ladder and ring the bell. I don't think they're mutually exclusive having both, but a lot of times we focus on the outcome with the big disregard of what the unintended consequences of some of that behavior, some of that focus, some of that discipline, some of that drive, some of that conquering can actually have in our life. And, and honestly, our loved ones and the relationships that we have that are most you know, close and near and dear to our hearts. Shashin, can you give us an example of something that would point this out with leaders or managers that uh, might be an everyday occurrence or something that you see frequently? I mean, it's 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 everywhere. I mean, I can talk about my I mean, it, it is consistently shown again and again that no matter what it looks like on paper and how good it may look and seem there's a human being underneath all that achievement. And that human being has got this duality. It's got this child inside of us. And it's either trying to seek approval by being a good boy or a good girl, or has been become like this rebel and is going out there to prove and show somebody that they're good enough and smart enough and lovable. And the whole process of getting to that next level is literally an overcompensation for a level of insecurity of not getting those things when we were younger. And as a result, by the time you get those things, as good as it may look, underneath that is still, there's this other side, this duality, this darkness, this, 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 this experience of life that doesn't match the actual achievements that our people have been you know, going after. I think you said in the book, the formal title of this is called Emotional Mastery Process or EMP. Is that correct? Correct. And how would you explain that to people? Uh, the kid and the king is a great catchphrase. But uh, where does the emotional mastery process come in? So the emotional mastery process was designed around the fundamental principle that at the end of the day, the person that's getting the least triggered, I think, is winning the game. And what I mean by triggered is upset, frustrated, disappointed, angry, the blow ups. Right. So I would argue that what we really want beyond the goals that we set for ourselves is an experience of life that just we want to feel good. So the emotional mastery process was to literally design this chain reaction of events that occur and the experience that we have 
and then the actions that we take as a result of it. So there are five essential questions that break it down into base. If, if, if you're in a situation in which you're triggered, if you're having an emotional reaction, if you're experiencing something that you don't like, you can ask yourself these five questions to gain some insight. And the first question is, what did you observe? Right, just the facts. As distinct from the second question, what did you conclude about what you observed? And it's in the second question that the book actually goes into a deep dive on because what you conclude about what you observe is directly related to the experiences and the conditioning you experience growing up in life. You're, each person brings to an event a series of experiences of life that act as a filter and creates a conclusion based on that filter. So, you know, it could be 60 degrees outside. And, you know, if you're from Colorado, you're like, oh, my God, it's gorgeous. Let's throw on some shorts and go on out. If you're from California, you're putting on a puffy. It depends on where you're coming from. So the first question is, what did you observe? Second question is, what did you conclude? Well, then the third question becomes, from that conclusion, what was the emotional state that resulted? So suddenly you're looking and watching somebody say something, for example, you then conclude they're being disrespectful, let's just say. The third question is, well, what emotional state came from that interpretation of that event? They just said, blah, blah, blah. Well, the fourth question then asks, well, what did you do? What action did you take from that emotional place? And then the fifth question is, well, did that action bring you closer to or farther from your intended outcome? And the premise of the book is that we actually don't go through life with outcomes. We actually go through life with expectations. We just go on in our life. And, you know, if, if somebody does something that we don't believe is the right thing, our opinions get in the way. Well, we just cascade down into, you know, getting triggered or being upset or getting frustrated or being disappointed or getting hurt or whatever those things are. So no matter who you are, no matter how successful you are, you're going to have intense emotional reactions to things in your life by breaking it down into those five questions, by doing a deep dive into understanding how it is that you came to those conclusions is the work that this book is about. Shashin, at this point in the show, we want to remind our audience that you're listening to The Secrets of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, Bill Horan. Our guest today is Sashin Shah. He is the author of The Kid and the King. And Sashin, we're going to ask you, one, where we can get the book, and if there's a website where we can find out more information. Absolutely. The website is my name, Shashin.com. That's spelled S H A S H. E E N as in November.com. And the book is on Amazon.com. If you just Google Shashin Shah, the kid and the king, it'll come right up. And if someone didn't get that down, we will bring it up later in the show once again. So you have time to get the proper information. But getting back to your book, one of the chapters, I love the heading, seeing what you've always known for the first time. Is this one of those aha moments that when people look at your book, they say, my gosh, you're right. When I was a little kid, I was belligerent. I would get excited. And I'm still doing that now. Is is that what that chapter is about? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, you're in the right ballpark. I mean, essentially seeing what you've known for a long time is, you know, I, I think the fundamental principle behind this whole book is like as adults, we really do underestimate the extent to which our childhood experiences, our past conditioning is affecting how we experience life today. And by simply deconstructing some of these events in our lives, deconstructing our present day triggers, we can see that there's just a finite list of the kinds of things that cause those emotional react that emotional reactivity within us. You know, I remember one of my mentors said years ago, he was like, you know, Shashin, you're not that interesting, actually. You know, you, you, you know, you know, you're this kid from Westchester, you know, your pants were Indian and, you know, the kids made fun of you and blah, 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 blah. 
and and you're still going on and you're still getting upset and you're still getting frustrated you're still going through these intense experiences and it's all coming from the same stuff so what are you going to do so this book is literally about connecting the dots in a meaningful way seeing how simple we are actually in how we respond and how we act in our day-to-day lives And through that awareness, it gives us a chance to give it some color and shape so we can recognize that behavior more clearly and actually do something about it instead of just hanging out in this awareness hell that a lot of this stuff, you know, ends up like, oh, I'm acutely aware of my dysfunction. But (laughs) it's about taking action. Now, the kid that you say is powered by love and approval, uh, do we do most of us and obviously you're working with people until you until you tell them this are they aware of some of the things that cause their reactions or is this that again that aha moment you know it's I, you know it's a great question and you know i guess it depends on the person but you know when you when you i think the aha moment is when you really get the extent to which you're just trying to like win other people's approval. You're just trying to get their admiration. You're trying, you're, you're either trying to do it by being a good boy or a good girl and being dutiful and saying the right things, sounding intelligent, sounding great. Or the other side of that coin is, you know, the rebel that's going to, you know, you know, do it their way and show you and prove to you that, again, that they're good enough and they're lovable and they're worthy and they're respectful. It's it's the same stuff. And when you start looking at the reactions that we have, when you look at what ends up stopping us from taking that action in our life, when you look at where we get stopped, it's literally the child inside of us taking on behaviors that protect us from failing at looking good. So for example, this book took me six years to get out of me. (laughs) And what I would arguably say is my little kid inside of me was terrified of releasing this book out into the world because once it got written, people could read it and people could criticize me. And I didn't want to deal with the criticism. I didn't want it to look bad. I didn't want to deal with any of the negativity that may come from the premise of the book. What if I failed? So the whole time along the way, I had to rewrite it. I had to rewrite it and rewrite it and rewrite. Finally, it was like, okay, it's time to let this thing go. But that's kind of the mechanism that you see at various levels, at various stages. I don't care who you are. Everyone's got an edge to their comfort zone. And the real premise of the book is understanding where that is. And instead of recoiling and being afraid of it, learn to dance around on that edge and explore that edge because it's there where I think the magic of life is. That's where we feel alive. That's really what I think people are craving more than the million dollars or the exit strategy or some new business or transforming the world. They just want to feel engaged and feel alive. And I think that's the premise and that's what people are looking for. And that's what this book takes on. Uh, You say most people quickly see that many of the traits they don't like are kid conditioning. Uh, I'm just going to say in the last week or last month with some of the leaders you've worked with, uh, uh, can you, without telling their names, is there uh, some particular traits that they've come out with and said, you know, uh, I drink too much because I did it in college and I'm still doing it because it made me popular or something like that? Well, I mean, it would be more along the line. I think that's one aspect of it. But in that specific context, when we look at the negative traits, the behaviors that are, are, you know, there's an exercise in the book where I ask you to write down your five positive traits and five negative traits. And we start looking at those traits. We see a lot of commonality. There's a lot of addiction issues. There's procrastination. There's um, getting angry, frustrated, things like that. And when you look at that behavior, that behavior If we take a page out of neuro-linguistic programming that behaviors ultimately have positive intent, consider that procrastinating 
the reason why we do it, the reason why I've got people that are with Harvard, you know, degrees and, you know, Ivy League educations that can't seem to show up to a call on time or can't finish an assignment when the assignments do is because there's some part of their psyche, which I call the kid that uses those negative traits to create a hedge against actually doing it full out and failing. It's arguable to say that what we're most afraid of is what would happen if we gave it our all, did everything the way we were supposed to, checked all the boxes, did it on time, prepped efficiently. And what if that still wasn't good enough? Then what would it say about ourselves? I think that's at the very core of these negative traits. So things like drinking and addictive behaviors, what they do is serve as a distraction. It's, it's like, you know, it's, it's a way of just saying, well, you know, if I wasn't drinking as much, I, you know, I could have done better. It gives us a way out. It's like going to play golf and complaining about, you know, something, you know, your arms a little <laughs> sore. My back's giving me some trouble. Okay. It gives us some excuse. Well, you know, I need, I'm going to try my hardest, but you know, Hey, listen, if I'm not that great, you know, it's because of that. That's what a lot of these negative traits are about. I, I love that idea of the list. And I think to all our listeners, just write down, as Sashin said, the five positive and five negative traits. And as you start thinking about that, I'm sure you, you will want to get a copy of The Kid and the King and find out how to use that to your advantage. Sashin, again, at this point in the show, we want to remind our listeners that they're listening to The Secrets of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Our guest today is Sashin Shah. He is the author of The Kid and the King. And we're going to ask him where we can get the book and where we can find out more information. If you go to shashin.com, there's a link to purchase the book directly. You could find it on amazon.com. If you look up shashin, S-H-A-S-H-E-E-N, last name is Shah, S-H-A-H. It's the kid and the king, the hidden inner struggle high achievers must conquer in order to reignite and re-engage with life. I, I love that. The hidden, what was the word? Interstructure? The hidden inner struggle. In, inner struggle that leaders must conquer. And I think we all want to be considered a leader or at some level within our group, whether it's a school or a business or a world political leader. Um, you mentioned that the kid is at his, at his worst when we aren't aware consciously what this kid is exerting and what influence he has over us. Well, your book is now alerting to us. Am, am I correct? Well, yeah, you know, it's, you know, we go through, if we're not conscious of this, this side of us that experiences this disappointment, this fear, this anxiety, this worry, this frustration and all that. And if it's not in the right context, what I've seen and, and part of my whole journey was literally trying to figure out, you know, what's wrong with me? Like why, you know, I, I, you know, we live in this world where, you know, if we, you know, if we, we were a little too heavy, we, we hire a coach and we lose weight, we go to the gym, we get stronger. Um, you know, we need, you know, we want to improve our relationship. We go to a therapist, we go, you know, we, we have this mentality that if there's discomfort in any way, we got to go fix it. We got to go out there and we got to go solve this, this thing that's going on inside of us. And, you know, the opportunity of this book is to just recognize that this dual, there's nothing wrong in this mechanism. It's just there's there's these situations that we come up against. We we have this fear. And when that fear comes up, the premise of the book is if you can understand where that fear is coming from. You can meet that fear and then take that action that you need that would be consistent with the outcomes that you've laid out for your life. And we love books like that. And again, it's a simple read, which is something we personally like on The Secrets of Success. People don't want to spend years going through a college course. They want something that can give them a message and that they can try. Um, you, you mentioned that the greatest cause of unhappiness and disagreements is people have unspoken expectations and that they fail to clearly define outcomes. Could you uh, wrap up our show talking about that? 
Yeah. Think about it. Right. You know, I mean, think about your drive home today when you walk into your house. Do you have an outcome that you want to have for your wife, for your for your husband? Do you actually think about like, what's the outcome I'd like to create when I walk through that door? Or do you have an expectation when you walk through that door? Is dinner ready? Are the kids asleep? You know, did, did you finish doing that project you said you were going to finish? You know, what if we actually operated and thought about for a second? Well, what's the outcome? What's the experience I'd like to have in this situation? And then go into that situation. How would that change how you show up? So what we see again and again and again is when people get triggered, when people get frustrated, when people get upset, all that's happened is, is that they had an expectation that the world was supposed to be a particular way and it wasn't that day and they have a fit about it. I mean, is there something wrong with that? Is that good or bad or right or wrong? You know, it, it's not for me to say. But what I will say about that, though, is that it does rob you from an experience of life that could be a lot more peaceful, just a lot more clear when you're operating from the emotional state of happiness, joy, when you have compassion and love and you're operating in that place, you're a hell of a lot more resourceful, creative, engaging, and you can move mountains from that place. You can arguably say that you can be a tyrant and be really pissed off and get that outcome too, but it's not going to be a lot of fun. And for a lot of my clients, they end up in a place being very alone and very misunderstood. And I think you can have it all. And that's what we want. That's what we're trying for. So before we wrap up, once again, I want our audience to know our guest has been Sashin Shah, spelled S-H-A-H. His book, which is a fun read, The Kid and the King. And Sashin, I'll leave it up to you to tell us the website and where we can get more, the book if we're out looking for it. If you go to shashin.com, S-H-A-S-H-E-E-N.com, you'll have a link to the Amazon website where you can download it on Kindle. You can buy a paperback copy of it, or in a couple of weeks, we'll have it out on audiobook as well. Beautiful. Thanks so much for being with us today. We'd like to let our audience know that you've been listening to The Secrets of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, Bill Horan, asking you to please join us again next week at the same time when we will continue our journey to success.